welcome back to the shop. Today I have something a little bit different. A video that I've been, I've been trying to record for a, quite a few years now. It's been an ongoing problem on the Ford Escapes from 2008 through 2012. And the problem is the trans cooler lines and the cooler themselves are leaking. Now what you may notice is that you'll look and you'll see a drip down below the vehicle and then you'll look a little closer and the whole radiator core support's full of fluid and the hoses going downward just soaked. You're like, oh, it's the hoses, it's the hoses. The problem is it's actually the, the condenser, the AC condenser is leaking trans fluid. How is that possible? Well, the way it's doing it is through gravity, obviously. It's leaking from the top down and soaking the hoses. And this is why right here. This is the condenser, the AC condenser. You can see the connection right here for the um, AC lines coming in and out, okay? But on the top here, you probably see the difference in the rows. See the rows right here and then the rows right here for the rest of it? You see how they're different? That's because the top part of this is actually the trans cooler. It's all integrated into there. Now, it's, it's totally separate system from the, the AC system condenser on there, but it does share the same core here like this. You can see the difference right there in the fins, the top few rows on there. And over here on the, pet, uh, the driver's side, on I say 2009 and newer, is the two lines for your trans cooler lines here. Whereas on the 08s, the, the AC fittings were here, right? On the passenger side, and above it was the, the uh, connections for the trans cooler line. So it's a little bit different. And those had a problem with the bracket, putting a lot of strain on the cooler and causing leaks. Whereas the new ones, it's all over here now, but they're having the same issue with where it attaches up here. This whole thing will be absolutely soaked. I'll show you how it looks on this particular vehicle so you can see it. And the problem is you're gonna have to suck down the AC system to change this part out. So it's up to you if you, if you wanna tackle this job, uh, but it's something to know before delving into the job itself. Now it's also a good idea is to just go ahead and drain the transmission fluid out of the transmission because you don't know how much is actually lost out of there and Mercon LV actually breaks down quite rapidly so you're going to want to go ahead and change that out and replenish the additive package anyways so you might as well just start draining that out of there right away and besides that we're going to pull the front bumper off the whole front bumper has come off of there the whole bumper cover and then we can start just unbolting a few things and the thing slides right out of there now the other option is to have a shaft suck down your AC system evacuate it all and then go ahead with your repair yourself, which there's a lot of labor involved, not to mention the condenser core is almost $400. Um, so you can see this is getting really expensive really fast. And then you can go ahead and do the repair and then bring it back to them so they can put a vacuum on it and of course fill with the correct amount of refrigerant. Either way you do it, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jack the front end. We're gonna get these wheels off of here so we can get access to all these little uh, push pins and screws so we can get this front bumper off of here and we can start pulling that condenser core out. Okay, now looking in your wheel well here, what you wanna do is start pulling all these little push pins all the way down and take them out because they actually hold the, the wheel well liner to the front bumper and that's how it's mainly attached to it. It's a lot of push pins and snap to connect pieces for this front bumper on here. What we're also gonna do is pull the splash guard out. You can see there's a 10 millimeter bolt right there and there's one right there, and of course another push pin over here. And then you just follow it around underneath, and you can see one's right there, there, and down there. And you just repeat for the other side over there. And then it looks something like this, working on the driver's side right now. Get your cat claw behind the tip of it, and it'll pull out, and get behind the second part, and then the whole thing will pull out. See, it's two pieces like that. And the rest of it is 10 millimeter. And now these are newer vehicles, but a lot of times these get really rusted. So going back in, I recommend putting a little bit of uh, anti-seize on there so they can come out in the future for service also. And continuing around, there's one here, there's one up in here and over here. And of course, there's one over here. And you get all those out. And of course you can see the leak now, it's very obvious. 
where it's coming from. And a long extension is a good idea if these ones up in here. And long extensions are good. And long extensions are a good idea for these two front ones up here on both sides. here and this whole thing will come down on you. Get that one out. And you can see the whole thing. It's really flexible. Just move it around and get it out of there. Okay now once that splash shield's removed you can easily see the transmission here. There's one drain plug in the bottom of this. It's a 7 16 You want to remove that and drain the transmission out completely. That's the proper way to do this repair. And as you can see, like I said, the, the fluid on here breaks down quite easily, so you want to make sure you get that old fluid out of there. And then, of course, repeat the same exact procedure over here. What this will do is it'll get the shields out of the way so you can clean them, and also those bolts that go through your shields into the course port, they actually um, bolt in part of the front bumper fascia cover they were taken off so it's a good idea just take the whole thing off of there wash it out get it out of your way and we can do it right a couple more 10 millimeter screws and this whole thing come off right here. Okay, our transmission is drained out enough. We're going to clean the hole real quick. Any kind of fluid or dirt. And then we're going to put the drain plug back into there with some thread sealant. I'll link to all that down below. And then we are going to torque it down to 106 inch pounds. We'll snug it down like so. Get it snug, and you don't want to over tighten this. You really want to, want to use a, a torque wrench for sure on these aluminum cases like this so we don't crack anything. And then we can go ahead and torque it down to 106 inch pounds. Quick wipe, and the transmission will be back and fully sealed up so we can move on to other stuff. Now, from the bottom of the vehicle, I can show you a better example of why many may think that it's the actual trans cooler lines, you can see they're all wet unless they're leaking from the crimps there maybe up top, what you gotta realize this this mesh on here is like a uh, like a conduit, it, it actually sucks the fluid down through here and just it just kind of wicks down through here and of course this is the lowest point and it collects right here but you can see it's all over the place on the radiator core support and then of course, up here, you can see the whole core is just totally packed. Especially up here where that um, the cooler is at. You can see right here where it failed. Okay, and that's where the lines attach right up in there. And up here from the top, you can look down to that core support and you can see it just pulling up down there. So it's, it's kind of hidden, it kind of pulls up down there until it gets really bad and then it starts leaking all over your driveway. Okay, with our splash guard out of the way and our three push pins out of there, you can see one, two, three on both sides. We can go underneath here and go after a few more bolts that hold the bumper cover in. You'll see two of them right here, two 10 millimeters, okay? And that's on each side. Now up by the license plate, there's a grill opening right here, and there's another two push pin fasteners. One right there that's missing, and then there's one over here 
which is how it should look on the other side. Take both those out. Okay, before you take the last two bolts out, you wanna make sure you go up into each one of your fog lamps and disconnect them, let the wires hang, and then we can go back up top side and start pulling this thing off of here. This is how those connectors look up in there. They're pushed right in like that. There's a little tab up top. You simply squeeze it down and pull it off of there. Now this is the part of the job that may freak out a lot of you out there. What we're basically gonna do is we're gonna take the front bumper here, we're gonna grab it with our hands, we're gonna manhandle it and rip it off the vehicle. Now the reason why we do this is because there's a bracket that bolts to the front fender on here and then the front bumper cover simply snaps into that. What you may notice is there's two white uh, pins in here that are part of the manufacturing process that are no longer needed once it's removed. So don't worry about those, they may bind you up a little bit, but besides that, we're just gonna take it and we're gonna rip it off of here. It's gonna look a little something like this. We're gonna grab it, we're gonna, like that. And don't worry about it, this plastic uh, bracket that it clips into is strong, okay? Whereas the bumper is ultra flexible, so just pull it off like that, don't pull it too much, where you're gonna tear the whole thing off, just enough to pop it out of that bracket and you'll be good to go. This thing is ultra, ultra flexible. And of course, repeat the same thing on the other side. Okay, last two bolts, there's a little pocket right here, another 10 mil, and then over here, another 10 mil, and this whole bumper cover will come right off of here. Now when you're taking these two last bolts out of here, you wanna make sure you put your knee into it like this and hold it up. And these 10 millimeter bolts, I can get it out of there, uh, these are definitely different, so keep these off to the side. They're different from all the rest of the 10 millimeter bolts. Different color also, and they have a shoulder on them. So we're gonna keep it off to the side. Again, hold it. Hold the bumper in place, okay? And besides that, you just grab it like this, a couple shakes, and the whole thing it should come off here. Just like so, that easy. Now the bumper fascia off of there is very evident where the leak is coming from. Like I said, it's coming from the uh, stress point caused by the mounting right here. You can see the mounting correlation to the leak right here. And then of course it just builds and collects down there. Okay, now that the condenser itself is fully exposed, it's very easy to take this out. Few bolts, few lines, few covers, and this thing will slide right up and out of here. So we're gonna start off with a shield right up top here. There's a couple push pins back in here. And it's best to go underneath the plastic and the push pin with your pry tool. And get these out of here because they stick in here really well. They're, they're pretty far in there. And they're long, you can see them. Like so. And there you one over here also, same thing. Get your pry tool in there and get them out. That was awesome. Wow, danger. Get that one out of there, change that one out. Besides that, this thing, it just clips onto the radiator and condenser here. You'll stick up on it, slide her out. Put that right there. Now, as you can see, this this really isn't in the way, but it does get in the way of putting it down directly in there and straight hooking it into the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off right here. It's another 10 millimeter bolt. Keep those together, okay? Put that inside there. And then we're going to take our, our cat claw, okay? And there's a shield right here, an air dam shield, and there's one on this side also. You're just simply going underneath here. There's a little uh, tab right here where it just kind of locks into there. And then you either put it off to the side like this and start working on it, or you can continue down here where it goes into uh, the front bumper support here. And it doesn't take much to get them out of there, so I have to get those out of there off the side, and then we got full access here. Same thing on this side. Maybe you'll see a little bit better. It just pulls up and out of there, and the same thing down here. 
Off to the side they go, they'll just kind of fall out of the way. Now at this point we have the AC lines right here which have 13 millimeter nuts on them. And then there's of course the two cooler lines on this side are different lengths for input and output. So just make sure you don't mess them up on there. So we'll go ahead and take off our AC nuts and get these lines out of the way. Now of course, as I stated earlier, you need to discharge your, your AC system evac it so that's completely empty. Now the studs that are on here, they come with the new condenser. So you don't have to um, go ahead and transfer those over either. After that, the wiggle, and it'll pop like that because of the um, vacuum in the system. And these lines are kind of impossible to mix up. So just pull them off to the side, okay? as best you can and then we can uh, go ahead and get the cooler lines up over here. The cooler lines uh, right here, the two clamps and the hoses are a little bit harder to get off but uh, because the cooler is still stationary it's not so bad. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up real quick before we ever pull these off of here. These lines because these these fittings over here for these uh, cooler lines, they're all barbed fittings, so they're kind of hard to get off of there. So just concentrate on getting the clamp down and away, and I'll pull you in here real quick uh, for a close to that. And then we can concentrate on sliding the lines off. Okay, now over here on these cooler lines, there's two of the constant tension clamps. So we're going to take those off of there. Okay, wiggle a little bit. And then either bring it up or bring it down and away from there. And the same thing with this one. Get them broken free and away. And the way this works is you basically get in here with a pair of pliers and you're going to grab it ever so gently and move back and forth like it is, moving just fine. But you're also going to put downward pressure on there and start getting it past those hose barbs on there. So I do something like this, I'll grab the, the line and move it out a little bit like that. So it's easier to get the wrench fully around it as you can see right there. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And I can use my upholstery remover and push down, okay? And again, you're only turning the hose with these. You're not actually gripping it and, and, and really grabbing it because all you're going to do is make it stick on there more. So you're just turning it like this. And I tell you this is probably the worst part of the job right here. Just it takes a while. Just make sure you keep that light pressure on there. And it should simply pull off like that. And the same thing, just get this freaking cooler line out of the way. And this one. Something like that. So we can get our pliers in there. start working it off. Now once both your trans cooler lines are off and out of the way, of course both our AC lines are off over here, we have two 10 millimeter bolts left, run here and one here, and this whole sucker will come out. What you have to realize is the one on the left here, the one that has the uh, bushing in it right here, that was me longer than this one right here. It's a huge size difference. So make sure you put them back in the same correct place. What you can do is just leave them here and here and you'll know. After that, you just kind of grab it, okay? And you lift it up without damaging the radiator. And kind of move it past here and get it out of here. Now these lines are going to be leaking, so just watch it as you're walking it away. 
Now while it's all apart on here, it's a good time to start cleaning everything up on here. Get the bulk of the residue off and then once the vehicle's back together, you can get a hose in here and some degreaser and really get it cleaned out on here. Especially the hoses, you want to clean all around them from all the dirt that got collected on them when they were leaking. Well, the fitting was leaking on the condenser. And then down below right here in the core support, it's just going to be flooded with fluid. So get as much out as you can now and then we can again wash it later with the hose and get the rest of the residue off okay now over here on your AC lines themselves there's gonna be an o-ring and a gasket on here it's a good idea to change these but I've never seen them actually leak um, after doing a repair like this so just make sure that they're clean they're not nicked or torn or flattened or pushed out in any way okay we'll clean both of them you're bound to have some kind of corrosion and make sure they're good to go and then we're going to put a little bit of oil on the o-rings before we stick them into the cooler get a little bit of this off of here and what you can do is just kind of tilt them a little bit like this one especially okay and we'll get the pack oil out of there and use that to lube the o-rings on there just a little bit is all you need and that way they go out without cutting. And those are ready to go then. Okay, now before you put the new condenser in, you want to locate the AC side, the two fittings right here, and pour in about one to two ounces of PAG oil. And what that looks like is right here, from Motorcraft. You want to put PAG oil in there so that it's ready in the system because it gets trapped in there and each one of the components in the AC system so when you're putting in a new dry component you want to make sure you replenish that oil in there. Now alternately if you don't have the oil on hand to want to go through all this because it is such a small amount we can actually just fill it once we're putting the refrigerant charge back in whenever you take it back to the place to get it recharged. That is an option also. For me, because I don't have an automatic oiler on my system, I'm going to pour it in here now. Just pour it in slowly, and it'll work its way in there. Doesn't matter which port, and it'll work its way through the system on there. Okay, now going back in, make sure that bushing is on the left-hand side, and of course we used a longer bolt. On this one in particular, the longer bolt is already in there, so you can't really mess it up. So this other one is just for spares. So you can go ahead and put this back into here, just be mindful of your lines. Okay, and it just slips into two grooves down in there. You'll see them, it'll just simply click right into them. this side and it'll fully drop right into that and it'll be holding it. At that point both these screw holes should line up. So get this one going first because it can move side to side. So we're moving a little bit and a little more. Now once it's in there these bolt holes are going to line up so line up this one first and get it tightened down, okay? And then this one on this side right here has a larger slot in it so it'll, it'll line up to whatever the other side has lined up to. And we'll just go ahead and tighten that down. I think the torque spec on these is like 18 pounds. Um, either way, snug them up, not too tight, and you'll be just fine. Be nice and secure in there, and we can start attaching your lines on here. Now again, these AC lines over here, they're kind of foolproof, you can't mix them up. So let's get those on there. You're going to have to do some finagling of the line so we can get it straight on there. And once it gets past the stud, it'll just go right into its hole at that point. And same thing with the top one. The top one's going to be even easier though. And then we're going to 
Get the two nuts onto here, the 13 millimeter nuts. So we secure the lines. Okay. Way it's snugged up, we'll go back later and we'll torque them down. Go over here to your um, trans cooler lines, okay? And again, there's gonna be a long one and a short one that should be sitting in the same place. So we're just gonna go ahead and push those back on, okay? Like so. And I think I usually just grab it with a rag and down here, and you can push these up onto here. You might need a little help. Now the other option to get these hoses on and off is a good pair of quality spark plug boot pliers like this that will grip it and won't damage the hose on there. You just have to make sure that both of them are clean just so it can do it. You can get them up in here then. Okay, let's torque down these uh, fittings over here for the AC. It's 133 inch pounds. Always oh, still have access. We can do it right. Go back and recheck them. And if there's any oil leakage, make sure it's all wiped up. Brake Clean does a great job of cleaning that off of there plus the die. All our bolts are tightened. Our lines over here are fully inserted and routed correctly. Now at this point, we just need to reassemble the vehicle. And we can start with these right here. Make sure they're still clipped in down below. Okay, and same thing over here. There are little shields back on. The rest of the job is pretty darn simple. Um, I need a new push fastener for over here. That one shot off. Okay, these are back on. Now let's get the other shield back on. And again, this one just lines up and then pushes into the radiator on there. Okay, let's get the hood release lever on here. I do recommend blue Loctite on there. These had a problem for a while there with them loosening up from the factories. Make sure it's nice and straight like that. We can. All right, now is a good time to get in here and clean this bumper cover as best you can before it ever goes on. Let's get the bulk of it off of here, and we can wash it later. Now when this thing goes back on, okay, you're simply gonna pick it up like so, kind of align it, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna concentrate on getting the grill holes lined up with the bolt holes. And everything else should just kind of fall into place and self-support. At this point, we can put in our special shoulder bolts that go into here, up top, and that will hold the whole thing while we're putting the rest of it on there. What you want to do is just put these in by hand, okay? Make sure everything's lined up on here. This one wasn't. Goes in the little hole. Okay. Now these these two will hold it on, no sweat, couple threads. And then we can go on to the, the sides over here and snap in the sides. And the rest of it is all push fasteners and a couple 10 millimeter bolts. Get this one in a couple threads. And then work on this. Okay, so over here, there is a trick to snapping this in and getting it aligned perfectly the first time. Now, these little white pieces, which just fell out of there, you don't need those. Like I said, make sure this is clean. Make sure your bracket inside of here is still secure. We're gonna kinda line it up, okay? Now, sometimes it'll do this right here. You see how everything's kinda lined up, okay? And then you just, 
and then the rest of this alignment right here will happen with those push fasteners in the wheel well liner right here. I'm going to show you on the other side how it may be a little bit harder to actually snap this into place. But, but usually it snaps in and aligns just like that. Okay, now on this side is a good example of how, these, how difficult these can be going back in. You can see we're lining everything up. Everything looks right. We're following the curves. Thing won't get in there, you know? The problem is, each one of these alignment tabs right here, there's a couple of them. There's, this one's an alignment. This one actually locks in. They are pointing down, so it's kind of hard to get it deep inside of that bracket in there snapped in straight on. So what you want to do is either you can go, lift up higher and then get above it and then pull down and then push it in or what you can do which is a little more risky is pull up each one of them with a cat claw like this okay so they get up in there and then make sure your wheel well liner is also out of the way and you just kind of get them up like that that one's already going in and that one's going in it's always that front one up here that's the hardest to get in with the angle. After that, just snaps in and you continue your wheel well. Okay, now installing the rest of the bumper fascia is pretty simple, a bunch of push fasteners, put your wheel well liner push fasteners back in, and then your splash guards, all your 10 millimeter bolts took out earlier. It's basically the, the installation is reversal of removal. The one note on going back in though is these bolts up here. These actually have an alignment to them. You can move them back and forth. What you want to do, once everything else is in place and, and tightened, this top part, you want to get it nice and close to the headlight right here so there's no um, air gap in there. As far as you can pretty much, it shouldn't touch it but it should be darn close. And the reason why is we had a problem early on with the design of this causing a whistling noise going down the road. So we had to adjust these and get them as close as possible like that. And the same thing for the other side. Okay, that's about it. As you can see, once the bumper cover's off of there, everything's laid out right in front of you. It's a very simple job from that point forward. Uh, basically, installation is the reversal of removal with a few notes that I just showed you. And also, we're going to have to obviously recharge the AC system and refill the transmission. You're going to want to start off at 5 quarts of Mercon LV for 09 and newer, and of course, 5 quarts of uh, Mercon V. Uh, for 2008 models, which is a CD4E transmission in there. And I'll link to all these tools and parts down below so you guys have a reference. Also, I have a video on how to fill and adjust the transmission fluid level properly on the 6F35 transmissions found in the 09 and newer vehicles. So you can watch the later half of that video and you'll see exactly how to adjust and fill it on there. Um, wheels, you want to torque down your wheels to 100 foot pounds. Uh, and then go for a drive so you can get the transmission fluid nice and hot so you can recheck it. When you come back to recheck it, torque the wheels down once again in case they settled or anything like that. The one other note I can give you about uh, going back together is after you recharge the AC system or even especially the uh, transmission anyway, I fill the transmission, adjust the transmission fluid level and all that, and I leave that bumper cover off and to the side. That way if there's any leaks down by the cooler or the lines he's stuck onto there, we can go ahead and fix that without pulling the whole front of the vehicle off again. That's a, one of the good tips I can give you. I've been doing that for years and it makes me, it gives me great confidence because I can see everything. If there's a minor leak or a large leak right away and uh, no comebacks that way, no problems in the future. Um, what's the other thing? Degreasing. Degreasing the, the engine compartment, that core support and all that. You want to do that afterwards after everything's buttoned back up and sealed up. That way no water gets in any of the systems on the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and use like simple green or something like that. Spray it on the area. Let it do its degreasing. And you simply take a garden hose and you wash it out real nice and it comes out real nice afterwards. Uh, nice and clean. So hopefully this helps. Uh, I know it's a really expensive repair, but if you do some of the labor yourself and you get like the condenser core through my links on Amazon, you're going to save a lot of money over going to a dealer, even a parts store and trying to get these parts and fixing it yourself. So hopefully this helps.